Hello everybody, my name is Kayla and welcome to Enchanted Evenings episode two. And today I'm gonna tell you all about my gospel truth. With that being said, we're gonna discuss Disney's Hercules. So Hercules was released June 13th, 1997. It is an American animated musical fant fantasy film and it runs for about one hour and 38 minutes. It is produced by the Walt Disney's feature an animation for Walt Disney Pictures and it is the 35th Disney animated feature film directed by Ron Clements and John Musker. The film is loosely based on the legendary hero of Hercules, the son of Zeus in Greek mythology. There is so much that goes on into the story, so I just wanna go ahead and jump right into it with our plot. In ancient Greece, the gods are celebrating the brand new baby of Zeus and Hera, baby Hercules. Angry at his brother for casting him down into the underworld, Hades plans to dethrone Zeus. The plan goes bad when Hades finds out that on Hercules' 18th birthday, Hercules will fight Hades and defeat him, which will let Zeus continue to sit on the throne in Olympus. So in order to prevent this from happening, Hades kidnaps Hercules and attempts to turn him mortal. His mistake was that he did not do his dirty work himself. So Hercules continues to live on earth and with help from a trainer, and then the love that grows into his heart, Hercules defeats Zeus and he finally becomes a true hero. In this movie, Disney has to take a lot of its own liberties with the real facts that happen in Greek mythology because so many different things happen that Disney did not want to incorporate into their movie to kind of keep it that true Disney self. The first one being that yes, Zeus is legendary is Hercules' father. However, Hera is not. Hera is married to Zeus, but Zeus cheats on Hera with the mortal Achlamene. And I do want to apologize in advance. Sometimes these Greek names are hard for me to say, so I may not be pronouncing them right. I'm going to try my best, but just kind of go with me on that. So Hera was angry that Zeus was cheating on her, so she actually sends serpents to go ahead and kill baby Hercules, but Hercules strangles them in his cradle. Achlamene abandons her baby in order to save her baby from Hera's wrath. Athena then brings a baby to Hera and is claiming that this baby is an orphan and needs the love of a mother. Hera later gives the baby back to Athena, where Athena gives the baby more strength and power. So that's really the beginnings of Hercules. Just said really quickly, there's a lot more that goes into it, but I wanna go ahead and go into the whole Disney aspect of this movie, just because that's what we're here discussing today. So before the movie actually even really begins, I noticed that this happened, which did not happen in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You see the big Cinderella castle and you have music in the background and you see Magic Kingdom and it's just such a beautiful sight and it gets you really excited to watch this movie. So that's how the movie begins. But the true movie of Hercules begins with a really low, serious, monotone male voice. And I don't know if the room that we are in as viewers is supposed to be uh, like a museum or if it almost looks like it's a cage, but it's a whole bunch of different artifacts, like Greek and Roman artifacts. And the camera zooms this into a vase. This vase has different muses on it and they actually end up taking over the story in their own gospel version. They sing a really catchy song that gets the audience really intrigued, really excited into the movie, and you are just ready to go with the very first song number. So we are two minutes and 40 seconds, and we are finally seeing Mount Olympus. And now the story is taking place, like I said, with new narrators, even though they are done at this point, but they do hop back into the story. So we see Mount Olympus and Mount Olympus is the tallest mountain that we see in our first picture. And this is where gods live here. They live high up above because you have kind of clouds in the center. And it's really cool because then you have in all gold words, Hercules. So if you kind of go to the movie and you think, hmm, what am I seeing? You'll know by this. 
So on top of the mountain, you see all the gods celebrating. The gods are really cool because they are all different colors. They are pink, green, yellow, blue, and they're sparkly and they're shiny. So we know that they are not human, that they are um, gods. When I was watching this um, and it finally gets close up to baby Hercules and there might be people who disagree with me on this, but personally, I think baby Hercules is a little funny looking. He has like this really gigantic head and this like tiny body, but then his shoulders are really massive and big. He's just, he's, I always think that Disney does a really good job at um, animating their babies. But with Hercules, not so much. That At least that's my opinion. Zeus gives Hercules his very first gift, which is Pegasus, who we know and love. And if you don't know what Pegasus is, he is a horse with wings, so he can fly all around. And it's super cute. We get to Hades at 5 minutes and 16 seconds. Now, Hades is a party crasher. He comes in, he crashes the party. And his very first line is, how sentimental. So we can tell that he's extremely bitter about his brother casting him down to the underworld and all the other gods up there celebrating. He tries to make a joke, but none of the other gods laugh at him. They kind of just like stare at him like, not funny, sir, not funny. Hades makes a point to say that Zeus is the one that forces him to live in the underworld when they all live in luxury. At the end of this, when Hades is about to leave and he makes his big entrance, Zeus makes a joke and all the other gods are <laughs> So you can kind of see that play. You know, they are like humoring Zeus when he does his jokes because he's the top dog up there. But then when Hades says something, it's, it's a no-go. Then we get back to where the muses start narrating us and they explain about Hades and the underworld because the next scene is we follow Hades and they kind of talk about back in the underworld. That was like super low for me. But they let us know that he is mean, rude, and that Hades does run the underworld and also that he has a plan to change things. And we also get to meet pain and panic and they are the comic relief of this story. But I also believe that Hades is a comic relief. We get to a couple other characters that are comic relief. This whole movie has a lot of comedic reliefs that happen into the show, which I love. So I feel that this movie has a lot of dynamics within that. But Pain and Panic are definitely comic relief. There's no doubt about that. At eight minutes, we meet the Fates. And if you don't know what the Fates are, there are these three evil witches that only have one eye that they can control the past, present, and future. And I'm sorry, they don't control it. They can see the past, present, and future of everything. And when we first meet them, they have this really long string that they cut. And when they cut that string, they mean that that person has died and their soul is entering the underworld. So apparently in Greek mythology, or at least in this movie, we all have our very own string to enter us into the underworld. So yay for us, excited about our string or not excited about our string. This um, person's soul kind of looks like a ghost. It's almost transparent. You can see through it. I think they say a really funny line in this. They say indoor plumbing, it's gonna be big. I don't know about you, but I remember this line in the trailer when you, when before this movie first came out. So I thought it was kind of cute to remember hearing this line. It's like, I remember that from the trailer. We see that Hades has a really bad temper because he burns a fire when the fates are starting to get on his nerves. They talk about things that we know, we know, and Hades is like, I know, you know. He knows, he knows, but he still wants to get his point across. So it's really funny. They tell Zeus in 18 years, the planets will align. And that when the planets align, Zeus will fall and Hades will rule all. But, a word of caution to this tale. If Hercules shall fight, you will fail. 
at this moment, if we didn't know that Hades had a bad temper now, well, we definitely know it because he blows everything up. There's like fire. He's like, what? He's very, very angry at this. So his big plan is for Pain and Panic to make Hercules mortal with a poisonous potion. We really don't know anything about this potion except that Hades just kind of has his potion stored. I kind of wish you would have gone more into maybe him making the potion because it kind of, and there's no other potions. It's just this one singular potion. So maybe this is just a potion, a bad potion for everything or I'm not too sure. But again, I did say at the beginning of this that there's so much that goes on to the story. Maybe they just felt like that wasn't really relevant to the story. Just here's this potion that he gives pain and panic to make Hercules mortal. So at 11 minutes and 20 seconds, they fly up into Olympus and they go ahead and kidnap baby Hercules. And Zeus and Hera, of course, like any parent, are extremely upset. Zeus screams really loud and you can hear the thunder and you can see the lightning bolts. And Pain and Panic are zooming away thinking that they have gotten away with this and they're super excited. They give the formula to baby Hercules, but they fail because... Hercules does not drink every drop. And before this happens, it is stated that he must drink every last bit of this potion, which Hercules does not. And because he does not, he does turn mortal, but he still has his strength. Okay. So Hercules is sitting alone by himself little baby off there crying mortal baby but super super strong in comes a cute couple who said that they have been praying to the gods for them to have a baby so they feel that this is their gift pain and panic come in as serpents so this is kind of like the greek uh, legend how hera brought these serpents so it's a little bit different thought that was pretty cool Baby's Hercules grabs him by the throat, ties him up, and tosses him away. And this couple sees it, and they're like, oh, wow, there's something about this baby. But they still take the baby Hercules, and they decide to raise him as their own. And I should mention that Hercules has, like, this necklace with, like, this big gold chain that says his name on it and says where he is from on it. So they know that his name is Hercules, so they don't change his name, which is pretty cool. It's really funny because pain and panic are like, oh my gosh, we, we, we failed, we didn't do it. And they said, well, if he finds out, talking about Hades, and they go, yes, if it's good, if it's good, if, if good, I don't know about that one. So we are at 13 minutes and 17 seconds. The muses are back and they help us narrate the story. They explain that Zeus searches for his baby, but once they find him, it is too late. He is mortal. But since he didn't drink the last drop, that Hercules has his godlike strength. I want to say this part, and this goes with the animators, they have this gold vase that we see, and it has like a really pretty painted picture on it with hills and some sheep. And then it cuts into the movie where you see Hercules riding through with his dad on a wagon but it's that exact same scene that's painted on this vase so it's really clever and it's really cute we get to the scene and you see this wagon that's just going crazy on this road and we come to find out that it's Hercules pulling the wagon and he is now a tall skinny awkward teenager this scene actually kind of reminded me of, you know, when you're first learning how to drive and your parents are going, slow down, slow down. And the car is kind of like going all crazy. This is to me kind of Hercules, you know, first driving lessons with his parents. Now me, I don't know. I don't think I was a crazy driver. I know I did a couple things and my parents are like, you can't do that. I was like, well, shoot, nobody told me. Um, so it's always really kind of reminding me about that when kids are first learning to drive because his dad's like, slow down. He's freaking out. It was, it just kind of caught me off on guard and I thought it was really funny. I do feel really bad for this poor little donkey because he's riding next to Hercules, uh, dad and they're just kind of going really fast and he gets tossed up in the air and Herc kind of has to catch him. It's really cute. 
we can tell that Hercules is raised really well because he respects his dad. He talks really nicely to his dad. His dad talks really nicely to him. It's very sweet. Hercules is told to stay by the wagon when they get to the village. So we know that maybe in the past, there was a few incidences that happened at the village that kind of keeps his father on edge that Hercules just stay right here, don't do anything. But I feel so bad for Hercules. He seems so sad by this. All he wants to do is to be accepted and to have friends. I feel in this moment we can all relate. I think there's times in our lives where all we want to do is be accepted and to have friends. And sometimes I feel like you pretend to be somebody who you're not in order to have those friends and to be accepted. And I'm not saying that at this moment Hercules is pretending because they all know that he has this really strength. They don't know it's a godlike strength but they know he's really strength. They call him awkward and everything. So when we see this scene, our hearts go out for teenage Hercules because a lot of us, especially in our elementary, middle school, teenage years, go through how to fit in before we kind of leave, find our space, our spot as adults. So not only is this a journey for Hercules, but it's almost a journey for us just kind of remembering the trials that we went through and then today as adults, which is really cool. There's a frisbee that gets tossed and Hercules hurries up and he tries to run and get it and he hits a pillar and he just destroys the whole village. These people in, the, in this village are so, so mean. They call him Jercules. Who comes up with these names? And his father is so sweet because he's trying to defend his son. He says he's just a boy and it's a really sweet moment with his dad. But Hercules believes them. He believes that he is a freak. So he is feeling very sad and very down on himself. We get to a scene where Hercules and his father is sitting on a hill where you can hear the birds in the background. You can see the sunset. It's just a really pretty father-son moment. And then all of a sudden, go the distance starts to play. When I'm watching this, or if I hear this song on my Spotify or anything like that, I automatically get chills on my arm. It is one of the best songs that Disney has written because it's so soft, but then it just leads onto something great. And you say, Yes, I can go the distance. That's how I feel every time I listen to this song. If you are feeling like Hercules at this moment, just really down in the dumps, play this song. It worked for Hercules. I know it can work for you and it can make you feel uplifted and just ready to go ahead on your journey. It's a very beautiful song, like I said. So if you are feeling sad and down, listen to the song, put it in. It always helps me. In the middle of the song, Hercules' parents, adoptive parents, I should say, bring out the necklace and they tell Hercules that they found him when he was a baby because Hercules just doesn't feel that he belongs anywhere. And his parents know this. They know that this is the reason why he feels this way. So they do give him the necklace and tell him that we're not a hundred percent sure what it means, but it basically says your name and it says something about Olympus. So Hercules decides to start his journey and he goes to the temple and to find Zeus just to see if he can get any answers. We go back into the song but Hercules is heading towards the temple to get some answers on who he is. So Hercules gets to this temple and he's down there and he's talking and all of a sudden there's a lightning bolt that strikes and the giant statue of Zeus comes to life. Freaky! Oh my goodness, I would be so scared if a statue just all of a sudden came to life. Super scary. Hercules himself also is pretty freaked out by this. He screams and he can fit. He's like this big so he can fit in Zeus's hand and Hercules is trying to get away and Zeus is kind of catching him. He calls him son. And so at this moment, Zeus explains to him the story of him getting kidnapped and that he is his son. In order to come home, you must become a true hero. Hercules isn't 100% sure what that means. So Hades, I'm sorry, not Hades, Zeus tells him that he needs to go find Philetetes. 
again i'm not sure i said his name right they do call him phil later on thank goodness and this should be his trainer to help him become a true hero then we cut back to the song and Hercules is finishing up his song. He gets on Pegasus because they are reunited and they fly off to go find trader, trainer Phil. We are at 21, 24 minutes and 31 seconds and we begin to see the planets are aligning. So Hercules does not have much time if he wants to defeat Zeus. Hercules arrives at the island where Phil lives and they are about to go some through some massive training. Phil is a super funny character. He's like half human, half goat. So it's really cute. It's, he's kind of hilarious. He always says, I have two words, but it's never two words. It's either three words or one word with two syllables. It's really funny. There is one line that I love that he says, kind of the first thing where we meet him, he goes, ugh, animals, disgusting. He's half animal. So it's just really cute, it's really funny. We walk into Phil's home, which it's, it's like he lives in this mountain and his home is all full of past heroes. Um, they're, I don't know, souvenirs or things that they used to work with. And Phil says to Hercules that he thought he could go the distance but all of these heroes ended up failing so Phil has kind of given up on his dream of wanting to know, be known in history as the top trainer of heroes. This comes to another mindset that I have about talking about our dreams for a lot of people, and I'm not going to say most, thankfully, you have these dreams, but they don't quite happen for you. And things in your life get really sad. And this is how Phil is feeling right now. He's just discouraged. He's sad. It's as if he's almost given up. So he's done. He He's had his heart broken way too many times, and he is not looking forward to training Hercules. But... Hercules tells him that he is Zeus's son. So by Zeus's command, Phil agrees and he starts to train Hercules. And Phil has his own cute little song that he, being, that he begins to sing. Phil says that Hercules is his last hope, so he'll have to do. Like I said, they go through massive training and throughout this training, Hercules' whole body is transformed. Formed. Instead of this tall, skinny, awkward teenager, Hercules is transformed into this like really muscular looking guy there. And he goes through all this different uh, training techniques such as damsel in distress, going through a obstacle course of smashing down stone. You have sharks that are crisscrossing each other. There's a rain of fire that Hercules has to zoom in. So I don't think myself I could go through this training, but it is Hercules, so not a surprise that he did this. They decide at 31 minutes and 50 seconds to go to Thebes. Phil so believes that this is the perfect place for Hercules to get some experience. Just like with any jobs nowadays, you kind of need to build up your resume. So that's what Hercules is going to do. On their way, they hear of a high-pitched woman scream. They decide to go ahead and figure out what that's about and go save this woman. This is where we meet Megara. She is fighting off a monster. His name is Zesis. I can't really say that right. And she looks like she has the situation pretty much taken care of. But Hercules comes in and he tries to defeat this monster. It's like... All this training just goes out the window. And at one moment, Phil says, use your head, like think, use, use your head. And so Hercules literally uses his head, bashes into this monster and ends up defeating him. Meg says, yes, she's a damn soul. She's in distress, but have a nice day. But again, Hercules comes in and he saves the day himself. Meg is very different than most female characters that we have seen before. She's very confident. She's independent. Dare I say she's pretty sexy. She calls Hercules Wonder Boy. 
At the beginning, Phil tries to hit on her and she's not having anything to do with Phil. So he's kind of like, oh, well, fine. I don't need to like you either. This is an interesting fact. Oh, geez, I just fast forward through all my notes here. Okay, so interesting fact. Phil's original line in Hercules about Meg was, don't let your guard down because of bear, a pair of big blue eyes. However, by the time the animators was finished, Meg's eyes were changed to purple, which meant big blue eyes was changed to goo goo eyes. I just thought that was a really funny fact. Hercules is tr in a trance by how beautiful Meg is. But like I said, Phil is over her. Pegasus does not like her. So they're kind of like, as Hercules is all goo goo eyes over Megara. It's funny because Hercules got all this trance. Oh, this is my, this is my cat over here. Come here, Tussie. You come, big girl. Ooh, she almost knocked that over. Anyways, um... Hercules needs a lesson how to speak to women. It's funny because he goes through this massive training on how to become, you know, all buff and to fight off monsters and such. But he, he just stumbles over his words. So we got to get him some women lessons here. Hercules takes off. We get into the forest and this happened. Remember in Snow White where the forest is kind of transformed? It becomes dark and creepy. And you see Pain and Panic again, but they have transformed their cells into a cute little bunny and chickmunk. At 37 minutes and 20 seconds, we realize that Meg works for Hades. Shocker. Meg tells Hades all about Wonder Boy Hercules. Hades finds out that Hercules is still alive. And he is mad. Because all of this time, he thought that Hercules was dead. Pain and panic, they take off because Hades has now realized what they told them about Hercules when he was a baby that they lied about. And it's so funny because they say, well, maybe, maybe it's a different Hercules. You, you remember a few years back when all the boys' names were Jason and all the girls' names were Brittany? It's sure just a different one. He knows it's not. He knows it's the one, the only Hercules, and they need to do something about it. So Hades comes up with a plan to defeat Hercules before his 18th birthday. Now at this point, we have a new scene and Phil and Hercules enter Thebes. The city is really funny. It kind of reminds me of New York City. I've never been there. So this is just myself watching it on movies. But you have different wagons going crazy. You have a flasher even. Phil at one point goes, I'm walking here. It's just really funny. It just kind of reminds me of a city, which I think is what we're supposed to get to. The people that live in Thebes are having really hard lives. When Hercules says, not to worry, I'm here because I am a hero, they all laugh at him because, again, his resume is not built. He doesn't have ex his experience yet, so they don't believe that he's a young hero. One woman says, young man, we need a professional hero, not an amateur. Oh, Lordy. So Hades wants to destroy Hercules. So he comes up with this plan that doesn't hurt Hercules. It actually helps him build up his resume. Meg runs into town and says, we, I need a hero. I need a hero. Two little boys are stuck under a rock slide and they need help to be saved. Hercules and Phil are like, okay, this is it. This is our time to, you know, prove yourself. They run to where this rock slide is. And of course, everybody in the city comes and follows them because we have some sort of action and disaster going on. The kids under the bold, boulder yell, help, someone call IXII. They pronounce the letters and they're actually spelling out 911 in Greek Roman numerals, IXII. With his strength, this is so easy. Hercules easily picks up the huge rock tosses away we do later find out that the two boys are pain and panic and this is all a part of Hades evil plan we hear this that was a terrible that was a terrible growl but we hear this growl and this big monster comes out and it is huge it looks like a big dragon and Phil's like, okay, this is your time. Take your sword. Try to remember everything I taught you. Good luck, pal. 
and he, uh, Hercules starts to fight off this monster. Now, this was Hades' plan to bring this monster to Hercules, okay? He did not think that he'd be able to defeat this monster. So it wasn't the two little boys. That was just kind of a trap to get him there. It was a trick trap. So the first monster that Hercules is trying to fight, the dragon-like monster, it, it doesn't go extremely well because the monster picks up Hercules with his mouth and tosses him in. At that moment, we think Herc is done. Phil gets really sad. And then there's another really high-pitched scream. And Hercules is inside the monster, alive, and with his sword, he... He cuts himself out of the monster and the monster now has lost his head. He is now decapitated. The monster, not Hercules, is decapitated. This moment we think, oh good, everything's good. The monster then has two more heads. So now we have a three-headed monster that Hercules has to destroy. As Hercules is fighting, cutting off heads, more heads emerge. So we, it looks like we have about 20 heads to one single monster that Hercules has to fight off. Feels really funny because he's like, I don't think this head slicing thing is working. Basically, try something new because that is not working. Uh, fun fact, it took the animators anywhere between six to 14 hours to animate a single frame of which there are 24 in a single second film. The beast, as they call it, depending on how many heads it had in the shot, the whole four minute action scene took them over a year to animate for us to watch. Just incredible. At this moment, Hercules is fighting them on all off. They have him in their hand. Hercules kind of hits the side of the mountain. The cliff falls on top of all the monsters and we think Hercules is dead. One hand from the monster is kind of rolled out and Hercules is still alive in that hand and he pries the hand open and then we have Hercules right here. And oh my goodness, Hercules has now saved the day. He has shown himself that he can fight off these monsters and he is a hero in the eyes of all these Thebeans, we'll call them. <laughs> Hades is so angry about this. At one moment, you see Hades just, what? Because he thought that this was going to be the scene where he kills Hercules and he was wrong. So we go from this really intense scene that has you sitting off your chair to a really fun, lighthearted scene because the muses start to sing zero to hero it's a really fun upbeat scene you see hercules fighting off many monsters throughout this song and then the song is amazing and it makes you just want to start dancing right away hercules is becoming a huge huge celebrity and he's making a lot of money while he's doing this i love this part because it shows you his adoptive parents like tiny little cottage that they're living in and they had like this big mansion that they added on to their little house. So Hercules is helping them out too, which is really cute. Fun fact, during the part where Herc signs his endorsement deals and makes guest appearances at events, this is clearly a reference to modern day athletes. However, it turns out that famous Greek athletes were often hired to do the same thing back in ancient Greece. So it's really, really cool to see that they incorporated this into the movie. So we cut back down to Hades, who, like I said, is extremely distraught because it's like every single monster that he's giving to Hercules is not quite working out for him. And at this scene, pain and panic come in and they are wearing his merchandise. Hercules is now selling merchandise because he is famous and they are wearing it. I don't know what they are thinking, but that of course is not going to make Hades happy at all. We also learn why Meg is working for Hades. She sold her soul to save her lover's soul himself, but then he ends up leaving Meg. So we can see why Meg has some distrust in people. 
Then we go back to the temple where Hercules sees Zeus and he says, today's the day. I have proved myself that I am a hero. I am ready to go with you, Father, and live on Mount Olympus. And his father is kind of like, um, no, I mean, you've done a great job, son. I'm really proud of you, but it's not, it's not time yet. So we go back to basically Hercules big mansion. He has a home himself, which is absolutely gorgeous. And it's really funny because you hear of an announcement, announcement saying to buy this like workout video and it's called buns of bronze. I just thought that was really funny to add in there. So we get into the side of Hercules mansion and he's really upset because he doesn't know what else he has to do to become a true hero. I mean, he's fighting off all these different monsters. He's just completely lost. He feels really discouraged and really defeated. He is up there kind of like posing to get a painting done and he has this big lion head around him and this is kind of a pitch to the Lion King because his head is scar. So I thought that was really cute. Phil is so great. He gives Hercules some words of encouragement just to make Hercules feel a little bit about, a little better about himself. And all of a sudden these fan girls come screaming into Hercules' home and they kind of attack him. And Phil says, don't worry, I got this, I got this. So he kind of gets all these girls to leave. But then Megaros shows up at Hercules' house and she decides to show Hercules how to have a day off. And Hercules, of course, is ready to do this because he's down, he's discouraged, and he has a thing for Meg. Let's be real here. She wants to find out what Hercules' weakness is. And this is Orders of Hades, because remember, she's still working for Hades. Poor Meg believes that all people are petty and dishonest. And she feels that way, like I said, with her past love, but she also feels that about herself, I believe, because here she is having this really good time with Hercules, but she's being dishonest with him because she's tricking him by trying to get what his weakness is. So she is, she's just a really sad person. And you do feel really bad about Meg, but they do have a really good date. Meg kind of has the feels for Hercules. She's almost feeling like this could be her person, but she won't say it. She will not say that she's in love. So she actually has this really awesome number that she sings. And it's not this typical slow ballad. It's, it's a fun song that she's able to sing and the muses come in and they're her little background singers. At one point, the muses turn into a singing bust, the same singing bust from Disney's Haunted Mansion ride at Magic Kingdom. So if you see this part of the movie and you go ride that ride, you'll see where they came up with that. It was really clever. I love when they take different elements from Disney movies or especially the parks and then they add it into the show that we are that we are watching currently. I think it's really clever and fun. And then it almost makes you wanna, I have to go ride Haunted Mansion. Sometimes it's easier said than done when you live 20 hours from Orlando. Hercules leaves Meg. Meg tells Hades that she cannot do this to Hercules and she informs him that it doesn't matter because he has no weakness. She does not see any weakness in Hercules. Well, Hades tells Meg, my dear, he does have a weakness. You are his weakness. We cut back into the next scene. Hercules is working out and he is on cloud nine. He had an awesome day. He's going woohoo. He's you know, doing like loops and stuff on all the gym equipment. He's just so excited. Well, when Meg and Hades are talking about Hercules, Phil overhears them and Phil comes and he tells Hercules that Meg has been dishonest and that she works for Hades. Hercules does not want to hear it all. He actually slaps Phil and he goes flying across and lands on all this heavy workout equipment. Phil says, okay, if you don't want to face the truth, then fine, I'm done. He kind of packs up his stuff and he's ready to leave. This is bad, you guys. This is really, really bad because at this moment, Hades shows up. Phil is gone, Hades shows up. He asks Hercules to take a day off from being a hero. 24 hours, no strength. Then Hades kind of snaps his finger and Meg shows up and she is all like tied up. And he says, 
if you lose your strength, then I will let her go free. And at first, Hercules is like, well, if she goes free, won't people be, you know, not if she goes free, but if I lose my strength, won't people be hurt? And Hades goes, well, yeah, there's war going on, but if you give up her strength, I will let her go. So because Hercules is so blinded by his love of Meg, he agrees to this. Talk about making a deal with the devil. That's exactly what Hercules has done. He shakes his hand. He loses all of his strength, so he's just like us. But it feels more strange to Hercules because he's not used to losing his strength. I and mean, he has his strength, so it's kind of hard for him to feel how we feel every day. Weak. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, sometimes we do. But then Hades reveals that Meg was working for him all this time. And Hercules feels betrayed, just like how anybody would. And pain and panic kind of jump around. They go, a hero's a zero, a hero's a zero. It's just rude. At this point, Hades releases the Titans. And this is in order for the Titans to come off and destroy Olympus, to destroy everything. So Hades can go ahead and sit on that throne. He releases them in the middle of ocean. Like there's the ocean and he kind of parts it almost like Moses and the, the Titans are down below. The Titans are a combination of freeze, crush, lava, tornado, and cyclops. I, again, I don't know if I said that right. It's really funny because once they get their release, they're like, destroy him freeze him, crush him, but they're all going in the wrong direction. And Hades is like, yeah, Olympus is that way. So then they have to turn all back around. And so they just destroyed a whole bunch of earth for no reason. Hey, they're all crazy. They get up to Olympus and they, they start basically defeating Olympus. They have the gods, the gods, kind of gets sucked into the tornado and Zeus gets in this really strange, it's almost like, it looks like a mountain. It's like built like this. And on one side you have the lava and the other side you have the frozen ice and Zeus is right in the middle of it. So he's being like dwarfed in this lava freezing combination that I don't know if it really affects him because he's a God, but it would affect us humans. Uh, the Cyclops, however, is told to go in to the city and attack Hercules. Now, remember you guys, at this point, Hercules does not have his strength, but he's feeling really defeated. So he's kind of like, well, I got nothing else to lose. I might as well just try to fight off this monster. And if I die, I die. I mean, this is where he's at. And again, I feel that I'm sure we've kind of all been there at this point, like, well, I mean, I got nothing else to lose. So this is a this is another pivotal moment for Hercules in his growth, I believe, of him becoming a hero. Meg knows that Hercules is in trouble, so she gets on Pegasus, which we know from the beginning of the movie that she does not like riding Pegasus. So for her to jump on this flying horse is a big deal for her. She runs, she goes finds Phil, and she tells him that he needs to come back because Hercules is about to make a big mistake of fighting off this monster. Phil is so wonderful. He gives Hercules some words of encouragement, like, come on, come on, you can, you can take him down. You got this. You, can, you, you know, defeated worse monsters than this. So even without his strength, Hercules ends up defeating this monster. He grabs some fire, sticks it in his eye, ties all these ropes around his feet, and this big monster falls off a cliff. Ha! Huh. Another villain falling to its death. Interesting, I shall say. After this happens, a huge heavy pillar falls down and it's about to fall on Hercules, but Megara does something very heroic herself. She pushes Hercules out of the way, sacrificing herself. And this is, of course, we know this is not her first time she sacrificed herself for somebody that she loves. So Meg does have a really big heart and she is about to die from this. Hercules ends up getting his strength back because Meg was hurt. Okay. 
So Hercules then hops on Pegasus to go fight Hades and free Zeus. Together they fight father and son. It's a really cool scene to see. All the Titans get sucked up in the tornado Titan. They swirl them around and they all together get combined and they get tossed up into space. So Hades is defeated, the Titans are gone, and yes, Zeus is still sitting high up on his Olympus throne. But we also have to remember that Megara is not doing well. She ends up passing away and her soul goes to the underworld. Hercules goes to the underworld to save her soul. But before he gets there, we see Hades, who is so mad. This is the mad that we've seen in the homie. We've seen him mad, but he is mad. He goes, we were so close. We were so close and it was ruined. And he just feels so defeated. I don't know if anybody has ever been there before where you do something in your life and you get so close and then it's just, Ah, it's crushing and feeding, and that's exactly how Hades feels at this moment. Um, a story about my sister actually, she was typing a 10 page paper for school on her laptop, and her cat comes up and sits down on the laptop and deletes the whole thing. You guys, she was done writing her paper, so I guarantee she felt like Hades at this moment. She was so close to finishing. Ugh, so it's that moment of frustration that Hades has. But Hercules enters and he says, let her go. I need Meg, let her go. And a cute line that Hades says here, he says, it's a small underworld after all. Like, it's a small world after all. He shows Meg's soul floating in the river of death. Hercules makes a deal that he will switch his soul with Meg. So he will stay in the underworld and Meg can go free. This just shows you how much of a hero Hercules actually is. He is willing to die for this woman because he loves her so much. Hades says, huh, funny, you can do it, but by the time you get down there, you'll be dead too. When Hercules is swimming down there, you can tell his body is aging, he's turning old, but all of a sudden, as he reaches the top, his body becomes, you know, nice, massive, full of strength. Hercules that we see in the whole entire movie, except the beginning, and he is glowing bright gold because this act of love makes Hercules a true hero, okay? And that means that Hercules is now a god and he can sit on Olympus with his father, Zeus. Hades is like, what, 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 what just happened? And Hercules punches him in his face and he goes, okay, well, I deserve that. You know, cause he, he's like, eh, yeah. But then Hercules punches him again and Zeus flies off the cliff into the river of death and of course, Pain of panic, say, oh, he's gonna be so mad when he gets out of there. And they go, you mean if, if it's good. I'm gonna guess that Hades is gonna get out of there. These, these two just don't ever seem to learn. So then Hercules brings Meg's soul back to her body where she is once again alive. And Hercules uses her little line that people do crazy things when they are in love. Oh, you guys, that is so sweet. They kiss and there's this fluffy cloud that Hercules and Meg get on and it brings them up to Olympus. All the gods are cheering and welcoming Hercules. They are so excited to have Hercules up there with all his home with him. His parents greet him and just how every child wants to hear their parents say that they are so proud of him. And Zeus says, for a true hero isn't measured by the size of his strength, but by the size of his heart. And I believe that this is the moral of the whole entire movie. Hercules tells him that his home, his heart is with Meg. 
He says that in this, that this is the moment that he has always dreamt of. He has always dreamt of finding, of finally finding a place where he belongs, but it's not going to be the same without Meg. His life will be empty. And I think this is another part that's relevant to us in our lives is that sometimes we think we know what our story is and we have these dreams that we think is what we want, but that at the end of the day, it's, it's not. Life is so amazing because we're not sure what's going to happen to us every single day and our dreams might be something completely different than what we thought before something that we didn't think that was going to be able to fulfill us in our lives does fulfill us and it's such a beautiful message and when i was re-watching this and watching this you know really intensely trying to you know make this episode for us it's like I was watching it for the first time. I was getting chills. I was getting teary eyed because I believe that this message throughout this story definitely works for everybody. And again, if you are feeling down on yourself or in the dumps because life and things aren't going your way, just watch Disney's Hercules because it shows you that you can do all these magnificent things if you believe in yourself. And then you get to the point where they, the muses come back and they sing, a star is born. So we're all happy, we're all singing, everybody's great. And I love this part in the movie. We have the night sky and the stars come up and it is an outline of Hercules. And the very last line of this movie is go, is the guy that says, that's Phil's boy. So Phil's dream gets fulfilled too. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode with me today. I hope you also enjoy going back and watching Hercules and really diving in to the movie and just listening to your heart as well. And everybody, that is my gospel truth. Have an enchanted evening, everybody. Goodbye now.